Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Hi guys. Well, this is going to be another shorter than usual video, but there's some interesting stuff happening. Um, I don't even know where to start, so let's just jump in, shall we? Let's go. We're actually going to start off with the fact that Piers Morgan had his Twitter account hacked. Uh, he was in a different time zone, according to his son, who put up some messages. And some really nasty tweets about the Queen were put up. Things that people know Piers Morgan would never say. Now, this is, I find this interesting for several reasons. And one of them being the fact that when Samantha Markle had her account hacked, everybody went, oh no, they don't hack Twitter accounts. You're a liar. You're a liar. Now his account, Piers Morgan account, was hacked. Now, in order to keep people from getting his private messages and, you know, DMs and stuff uh, that were on Twitter, he's had to wipe his entire account. I feel bad for him. Hmm. But that just goes to show you it can happen. Well, there's a little bit of a shine to the black cloud is that Harry and Meghan have been quiet because they spent Christmas privately in California. Usually when they're quiet, that means they're about to come out with something. All right, this is just a little something I saw on Twitter, but I have to agree with it. Everybody keeps saying that Megan's a proud black woman, but she's bleached her skin, she straightens her hair, she's had her nose job, you guys can deny it, but she did. She has no black female friends except for Serena Williams. She identified as being Caucasian on her driver's license. Her husbands have all been white. Her boyfriends have all been white. She's cut ties with her entire African-American side of her family. And it appears from what I can see that she's got no African-American employees. Very interesting for somebody who's a proud black woman. Now I have to go back to that Netflix documentary again. Remember they showed this photo? Now remember, Harry and Meghan are the king and queen of fighting misinformation. You know, you have to be careful what you post because you don't want people to get the wrong idea. But they posted this photo showing all these people behind a fence when actually what had happened was uh, William and Catherine were on a soccer field and the people were behind the fence at the soccer field. And then it came out, Raheem Sterling, an African soccer player, was on the field with William and Catherine. And he also went over to the fence to say hello to people that were behind the fence. Same exact scenario. And nobody said a word and nobody batted an eye. There you go. Now, we also know that Harry says that it's the Daily Mail's fault that Meghan had a miscarriage. And, of course, it's been shown that 10 to 20 percent of known pregnancies end in miscarriage, but nobody says that excessive stress causes miscarriages. So, Harry, again, spewed out misinformation. Unlikely Bot pointed this out on Twitter, which is, I didn't catch, the duo have filmed in the same three outfits in New York City, three spontaneous events, their therapy session, their pursuit of the paps, and then finding out about Knopf's evidence. If you look at the photos, they're wearing the exact same outfit that all happened in one day. They changed Megan's hair, but the rest of it was all filmed the same day. Now we know that after the Oprah show and after Netflix, Harry's got his book, The Spare. Megan's got her book, Unforgiven. And yet they're asking an, for an apology from the royal family, which obviously the royal family is not going to give them. They really ought to give it up. Charles should just go ahead and take those titles. And, and no, I wouldn't give the kids titles either. Why would you want them to have titles from such a horrible institution? And as far as misinformation goes, according to Neil Sean, Beyonce's people said that she did not send that text to Meghan Markle, that that was a lie. Hmm. And talking about Neil Sean, uh, yeah, people have been accusing Meghan Markle of going for the Best Actress Award with that documentary. Because according to Neil Sean, Megan told Liz Garbus to submit that six-part Netflix disaster to every single awards show, Golden Globes, Emmys, Oscars, in an attempt to win something. Yeah, I don't think so. 
Well, Fox Business News here in the United States had something to say about this whole Netflix documentary thing and his ratings and the children's safety. Listen to this. Uh, what's so sad here, I think, is what has already been squandered by Harry. You just mentioned about all that they have. What about what they've lost by doing what they've done themselves? He had an approval rating by a nation that absolutely loved him. YouGov poll says he was plus 81 percent in the UK, and now he's fallen to minus 63, Jerry. She has gone from plus 42 percent to minus 72. What a terrible plummet from all they've said and done. This, uh, this documentary, which I have to confess I haven't watched, although I've seen some of the highlights, so-called highlights of it, uh, it seems to be backfiring quite badly, and not just with the British, as you've described, but my impression is a lot of Americans, even who, some who were sympathetic to this couple, are watching this and saying, really? You really want us to believe that you've been treated so terribly? You really want us to believe with your sitting there in your beautiful house in, in California with all your celebrity friends that you're some sort of a victim? I think people have had enough, haven't they? They absolutely have, and you can look at that statistically via data in the U.S. in terms of what the networks and the popularity are saying. And one last thought here, two, two things for you, Jerry. One, strikes across the U.K., perhaps the media should give them what they want, which is silence and their own privacy they declared they wanted, and go on strike and stop giving them more viewers. And last but not least, what about child protection services in California? Their actual guidance is that a parent has to show the right concern and guidance to their children. They've already declared that Megan was suicidal, and now they're asking for the very thing that they say they didn't want. That is an issue in terms of parenting for their children. Now, the big story for today is this article that was written asking if 2022 was the year we finally got tired of narcissists, and it lists Elon Musk, uh, Kanye West, Elizabeth Holmes, Meghan Markle, and Donald Trump, and the fact that they used attention as currency and ego as fuel, and were rewarded for a time with what they craved, which was that people were drawn to love them. But this person wrote, somewhere between the fifth and sixth hour of the Harry and Meghan show, um, would suggest that there is no one more in love, no one more socially conscious, and no one more aggrieved than them. The natural sympathy for the couple started turning to irritation, and it occurred to this writer that ego has its limits. The writer said it struck her that the overreach that led to the Sussexes' critically panned mega series is the same impulse that turned Elon Musk into a terror on Twitter that prompted Yee, who we all know as uh, Kanye West, to up the ante of outrageous behavior until he crossed the line to blatant anti-Semitism and sent Bankman freed from the top of the world to a Bahama jail. They're saying that narcissism can be a clinical definition, however, or a clinical diagnosis, however, we all have some self-love. They pointed out that Harry and Meghan are addicted to the public eye and they're tiresome. And whereas you have somebody like Kanye West, whose need for attention has evolved from outbursts at award shows to wearing White Lives Matter t-shirts and making anti-Semitic comments on podcasts. So what do you think happened when the Sussex Squad read this article? They went absolutely insane and started threatening the woman who wrote the article, who happens to be Jewish. They started making fun of the way she looks, and they started to put up horrible photos from the Holocaust with all kinds of threats. It's been absolutely disgusting. One of the Sussex squad put up pictures of emaciated naked men standing there and wrote, you Jews have short memories, right? And then put up, these two women who thought it was a good idea to go harass on YouTube should think about what hate did to their ancestors. Blatant threats. But then again, remember, they're representing Harry and Meghan, so there you go. And here comes Christopher Boozy. Placing Meghan Markle at the center of criminals and anti-Semites is not an accident. The hate is palpable. A woman of color protecting her family and defending herself isn't narcissism. What is it, though, when your act of defending yourself is putting out blatant misinformation and lies? I wonder what you call that. 
All right, you guys, you know what I want. Leave those comments below. Make them good. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future uploads and of lives when they come up. Uh, if you've already hit that button, just double check and make sure that you're still subscribed since people are still being unsubscribed, okay? Don't forget to go into the description box and there you will find the links to my Twitter, my Getter, my Rumble, my email, my Patreon. For those of you who've donated through my coffee fund and through the... Um, uh, the thanks button. Thank you so much. Don't forget, we're starting our fundraiser on January 1st. And as always, you guys, have a great day.